Parliament is in the full swing of things, and I have the pleasure this week to break down some of the madness that's been going on, talking about the Digital Identity Bill, talking about online censorship, uh, talking about maybe the voice to Parliament as well with Senator Antic. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Joel, thanks for having me. It's a big big ticket list of items there, but we'll get through it. We'll, we'll do our best. I, I don't know how you do it. I mean, there's there's. did you experience any cuts to your... Um, to your parliamentary stuff. I know some of the crossbenchers did in the Senate, um, yeah. but but I don't know how you guys managed to get across all of that work. I think uh, in the last parliamentary sitting, there was something like 50,000 pages of reading the Senate has had to do. Yeah, it's huge. Look, there's a lot to get through. And no, we haven't, um, but the crossbench seems to have, and that's something the Albanese government have decided upon. So um, that's a call for them, but there's a lot to get through. I mean, I think in, inside a party, it's a little bit easier because you know there are things that, uh, you know, that, that the party takes a position on and, uh, you know, and of course we're entitled to cross the floor on, on bits and pieces, but um, it's very, very difficult for the crossbench, I think, to be across that much information. And, and we all know the devil's in the detail. I mean, that, that the, the climate change bill 2022, which we might talk about later, is the very definition of that. The detail is everything. Absolutely. And look, you've, you've been doing some phenomenal work. You've been, you've been hammering them in the parliament. You know, it's often been an empty parliament, but the people out there have been hearing you. You've been reaching millions of people in terms of the amount of views of, of these videos if you collect them together. And I wanted to start on this one of the most important topics I think that you've been touching on. Not many people have been talking about. Full credit to Alan Jones. You appeared on his show around about the 22nd of July, and you're talking about the digital identity bill, namely the Trusted Digital Identity Bill, where you said it will lay the foundation for a government-controlled central information database for every Australian. This can lead to a social credit style system and a system which will forever change the fabric of society. Why is this important to Australians? Yeah, I think it's really important to Australians. I mean, it, as you say, it's called the Trusted Digital Identity Bill, which should you know make sure everyone's comfortable then that it's trusted. We don't know who it's trusted by, but yeah, um, you know, it's the, the naming always gives it away. It's, uh, it's I always say it's a bit like the People's Democratic Republic of you know that you can tell the least <laughs> democratic countries by that sort of yeah. that sort of yeah. title. But um, look, this is a pretty important piece of legislation. It was actually. Um, started under a, a you know the liberal government the morrison government um and the question keeps getting asked who who asked for this you know what why did anyone want this and the rationale for it is really a centralized government uh database or, or you know digital id which is designed to kind of cover the cracks of the various my gov uh, different government agencies so it's pitched as you know a new way of creating a single one-stop identity for for australians but these things never stay stay where they start. You know, we're told it's voluntary at the moment, but the truth is we were told that about COVID as well. We were told about, you know, voluntary, uh, you know, uh, therapies in COVID and, of course, things become mandated very quickly. So you can well imagine this is a similar situation uh, here whereby it starts off that if you'd like to opt into this system, you get a digital identity, it starts collating data about you and, you know, being able to make sure you can access government websites and then pretty soon the private sector picks it up and then pretty soon you can't actually get a bank loan without having a digital ID and all of a sudden it becomes almost impossible to live without a digital ID. And then the next question becomes, you know, what is actually going to be the purpose of this? Like, you know, we've seen what happened in Canada um, with the truckers getting, you know, bank accounts frozen. We've seen all sorts of you know, instances here with QR codes and, you know, this sort of social credit style system. But, you know, does this lend itself to a future whereby this becomes a giant hoover for information and people's, you know, data, preferences and, you know, medical history and voting records and whatever? Now, a lot of this might not happen, but we don't know. And once the building blocks are there, it becomes all too easy, I think, for, um, you know, for government and private sector to trade and share that information and all for what? For, for the sake of safety and convenience. I mean, I think we're too quick to just dismiss this as being a sort of a, a benign little uh, event and a, a government platform. I got some real concerns about this. I think this has the very real risk of setting the, the framework for a social credit style system. This, this, this may well be with all the other things that are going on, the beginnings of, you know, the ability to shut people down if they don't comply. I, I, I think, um, you know, you'd probably agree and hear this from co your constituents. Trust in the government, trust in our institutions is at a record low. The universities, uh, the mainstream media, uh, or the corporate media, as I like to call them, no one trusts anyone that's that's coming out. And 
I, re- I did an interview with George Christensen where he made the point about the health passports where people could digitally have their health record on there. He was promised and government members were promised that this information wouldn't be given to the states and used by the states to actually get people fired. George Christensen, former member of parliament for the Nationals, he went as far to say that they lied to him about that use of that information. So, I, I mean, we can sort of see why people are very you know, upset about, you know, the, the suggestion of digital identity, something that might actually integrate your health information as well as your ability to pay for and, and pay, pay your bills. Um, is that what you're hearing from your constituents on this particular topic? Yeah, I hear a lot of it. There's a lot of concern out there about all of those things. I mean, you only have to look back to the example in South Australia where we had uh, in the last you know, 12 to 18 months during the COVID period, we had uh, the Home Quarantine app, which was one touted as being uh, revolutionary, you know, one of its one of the first of its kind, and what a great thing is this. And this was a piece of software that sat on your phone that, uh, rather than you getting put into uh, some sort of quarantine in a midi hotel, you were able to you the privilege of staying in your own home. <laughs> yeah. um, whereby the, the 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 payoff for that was using this system, which took a photo of you and relayed your GPS data. And if you didn't answer that call at the right time, then you got a knock on the door from the police, which I mean, it sounded awful to me. It sounded like an absolute, you know, dystopian nightmare, the sort of thing you'd get out of, you know, Xinjiang or somewhere like that. Mm. Um, but, you know, we saw it in other instances too. We were told that the QR code data wouldn't go missing and it did. It went missing in Victoria. It got missing here, there and everywhere. So you can't, you, you, nobody in their right mind can ever actually say that they trust government departments because the reality is they're, 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 they're fallible. And you can imagine this centralised database for information. I mean, this is going to be the greatest target for hackers you have ever seen, and they will get it. They will get the information, and 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 you know that's just the way it is. We've seen you know once again hacks all over the country on government databases. You know this is the sort of information that potentially gets collated that no authoritarian dictatorship could ever have dreamed about. And you know those who trust institutions, I, I think these days are very very few and far between, or just foolish. Absolutely, and I, I mean I've thrown a uh, cartoon up of. Uh... Uh, Foreign Minister Penny Wong uh, meeting with the Foreign Minister of China, and um, I mean we've we've seen some hacks originating from China, whether or not they were from the state actor itself. Um, we don't, I, I I don't know. I, I've got probably got to ask Senator Patterson about that one. He's, mm. he's he was on that, but um, but I, I do believe yeah, absolutely. I mean we're we're on the war path right now with with China. We're on a collision course with regards to the Taiwan Strait. Um, and I, I, I'm really worried about the, the weaponization of, you know, our digital identity. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but to make matters worse, Senator Antic, I mean, not, not only were you trying to raise the flag on this, particularly on Alan Jones' show on ADH TV, and they do some phenomenal work over there, but you were then fact-checked by, correct me if I'm wrong, the Australian Associated Press, the AAP. Well, apparently, I mean, I, the question was asked about one of the comments that was made um, as a, in the form of a fact check. And, uh, you know, we all have a varying degree of views about fact checks and, and, and what their intent is and you know what they are. And I went back and had a look, of course, and, um, you know, there was, uh, I guess, a, a theme to the fact checks. You know, they, they never seem to, uh, uh, you know, to touch on one side of the political fence. They always seem to touch on the other. And uh, so, yeah, look, I mean, I think this is just the, the way of, of, of life at the moment in, in politics. I mean, you know, these corporate media arms, they, they come, you know, armed with a message in many instances, and it's very hard to, to resist. And, you know, I think people are sceptical about fact checks, whether it's Media Watch on the ABC or, uh, you know, or the, the, the many that are sort of floating around on the internet. Um, I think people have become a bit cynical. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you ended up responding to them in the form of your own uh, media release. And yeah, you, you did make that point. You said that, hang on a sec, why is it that you're only fact-checking right-wing stuff and their opinions on those two topics, climate change and COVID? I mean, it, it, it's when was the last time a left-wing channel on Facebook got deranked, shadow banned because of their views or overselling the jab? You don't see that happen. Correct me if I'm wrong, the AAP, they'll probably write a fact-check about this. But Guys, who are the AAP? I, I've done an explanation about this in late 2020. Um, they have written probably five fact checks, particularly for me, to downrank my content over the last two years. What they do is they are contracted by Facebook. 
They are certified to write these fact checks where they look at your content. You could say a hundred things right, but if you say one thing wrong, they will grab that one thing, they will they will put it across experts, and you might genuinely be wrong. And then they will actually fact check it on the slightest inaccuracy, slightest number wrong, and then they will use that article, Facebook will use that article to downrank your content, to limit your exposure to new audiences and to really coordinate you. So you could have a page of one, some hundred thousand people and you're usually cracking you know, hundreds of thousands of views and videos and then all of a sudden you can't even crack 3,000 views. That's something I've experienced a number of times. I've seen Craig Kelly's page get smashed and, and deleted. I've seen uh, Ricardo Bosi's get smashed. Turning Points has been was, was had a fact check written about us recently and it's happened with, with you, Senator Antic. And it, there's nothing that enrages me more than censorship. It, it really does. Because if you can't make an argument, then what's the point? I mean, you, it doesn't matter if you have the best arguments in the world. What, what, can we, what can we do to solve this? And I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a great question because ultimately this is a big problem for social media. It's a big problem for, you know, for the future of our democracy. You know, we used to have a very limited scope of media in this country. You know, it was newspapers, TV and radio. And they were all controlled to the best ability they can in terms of censorship by, by regulation, legal um, you know, legislation, the media ownership laws. Um, that world is just blown away now because these are all international companies uh, with you know holdings in different offshore locations and uh, so it's a very difficult beast to control now and you've got I guess so much power in such small hands and all it takes is you know an editorial line to drift into this group big tech and and others to for it to become very very persuasive and I, and I think we are seeing that I mean I've in recent times uh, had the greatest of suspicions and we'd never know uh, the actual answer to this but it's pretty clear to me that you know things have been getting down ranked and you know in fact that that interview with adh uh with alan jones was was one of them that i was pretty sure was shadow banned it was just getting zero traction and uh you know maybe maybe they didn't like what i was saying but the reality is it's happening and it's out there and what i would really like to see is more more transparency on this because it's so important to the democracy i, I moved last year for a senate select committee uh, on this very issue to look into all these issues uh, to try and have that set up and uh, it, it missed out. It missed out by one vote in the end. And, you know, unfortunately, if that had got up, we'd now be well and truly into the position of uh, of having these executives before the Senate being asking them all these questions to provide documents potentially about uh, about shadow banning and all these things. And I just think it's something we're not we're not paying enough attention to in this in this building, you know, because I think it's it doesn't take much for a change in ownership for the pendulum to swing from one side of politics to the other, by the way. I mean, the point of media, media ownership laws was always that it remain as impartial as it can. Um, and that's that's good for democracy. And, and you're right, censorship, um, you know, I know that free speech has to ultimately be a finite concept. You can't have people walking around, um, you know, making death threats and or whatever it may be. It's got to be a finite position. But you know, what we're seeing at the moment, I think, goes well beyond that. I think there are opinions that are suitable and there are opinions which are not suitable. And that, that generally is a problem. Genuinely people, is a problem. P- people often ask me, what can I do? I mean, a lot of politicians, they ask me for my opinion on how to not get censored as much. And the conclusion I've sort of come to is, well, guys, this isn't a problem from Australia. This is an American exported problem. Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're really... and I, I hate this because it goes against every fiber of my being. I believe in the classic Jordan Peterson, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and try and beat this thing. But genuinely in America, they, they have exported this and they need to fix it. They mm. really do. Whether that's in the form of someone similar to Elon Musk picking up the baton on one of the platforms and setting a higher standard so that they're appealing to 100% of the country rather than just 50% being the, the lefties. You know, um, I don't know. But... Um, what we could yeah. potentially do is pass legislation, but maybe they just pull the plug like they did with the uh, media bargaining code. That's exactly right. And, and of course, we saw the power of this with the Parler experience, didn't we, at the end of uh, the American elections when Parler was developing a following of its own and it was pulled from the Apple store and then it was pulled from Google and then ultimately <laughs> Amazon web, web hosting pulled it from there. I mean, yeah. the ability for these companies to move as a pack and de-platform is, is extraordinary. And, and we probably, we, we certainly have never seen anything like it. I don't think there are, are any answers yet, and I just wonder right at this moment whether there's any, uh, you know, any impetus for it as well in the US. It, it doesn't feel like it at the moment. 
Yeah, it, it's it's absolutely astonishing. So, guys, look, I've I've already flashed it uh, once already. Um, if you have the opportunity, if you're really eager to see what Senator Antic is uh, putting up, please go join his actual mailing list. He did a post after this saying that he's being censored. So please go join his mailing list at uh, www. Uh, dot, uh, sorry, alexantic.com.au forward slash join. That's www.alexantic.com.au. It's on the screen forward slash join. Screenshot that. Join it. Make sure you uh, follow exactly what he's doing there. They can't get his. E- they can't get the emails. Um, that's the best way for you to find out wh- where he's at. Um, Alex, is there anywhere else you're on uh, Facebook or? Yeah, look, I've actually avoided Twitter. I have to say, Twitter's a bit of a. You know, Twitter's a swamp. <laughs> so I just. I mean, what is the point? Um, so yeah. I, don't, I don't really go into there. I've got a Getter account, which is uh, the sort of the fallback, but it's largely repetitive of Facebook. And look, I think like all of us, we're we're hoping that. That there'll be an alternative uh, which gets you know gets some it's ahead of steam. I mean the Twitter stuff was very uh, was very hopeful, but uh, we'll mm. see where that ends up. Of course, Elon Musk's in the courts now, uh, and who knows where that ends up. But uh, in the meantime, look, I think the best thing people can do is is as you say is to uh, sign up, uh, you know, and, and follow us by email. And you know, we send out regular updates, and uh, you know that that that's that's the sort of the foolproof way of doing it. And we're all expecting at some point that. You know, we'll go to Facebook jail or get cast off or banned or whatever it is. And, you know, and I think this is the stopgap until we find a better platform. Absolutely. And I do want to ask you about this final topic before we um, wrap up this interview. Um, it just seems as though we're, we're just continually going through all of these different crises. You know, we had, um, you know, the mask wearing, we had COVID mania, we had everyone supporting Ukraine, and you had an excellent segment with Corey Bernardi about that this week. Um, and then it just seems as though we're, we're also supporting sort of uh, Disney and the mainstream media and the mainstream <laughs> pop culture narrative. I mean, what's, what is going on in, in society? I mean, is it all falling apart? Is this the fall of Rome we're witnessing? <laughs> it does feel like that. I mean, I, there's, there's a whole lot of people, and people will work this out eventually. You know, people will look back on it. And, of course, history is always written by the victors, so we'll see where that, where that lands. But it is weird, isn't it? I mean, I, I heard someone say, uh, you know, the other day that, that there was this sort of concept once again upon a time that, you know, Big Pharma, for example, was the, was the devil to the left, and now they're the saviour, and... You know, you see the same thing with, uh, as you say, with with the corporate the corporate media and corporates generally. I I, I think, you know, just today I heard the Greens in the chamber here talking about, you know, the, the, our side of politics being in bed with big corporates. And I thought, wow, I, that's not the big corporates I know. This ESG stuff that's out there is not is not where I sit. I can tell you, I, you know, the, what my side of politics, the politics that I'm interested in, is is the Menzian style of the Liberal Party, where uh, you know they were really talking about the, the the forgotten people, people in the middle. You know, it wasn't big corporates and it wasn't organized labor. It was the kind of the, the the mum and dads and the shop owners and that sort of thing. So, you know, politics is a funny business. Things things do have a pendulous effect. I'm really hopeful one day that, you know, the message will get through to the kids. They always say that uh, conservatism is going to become the new counterculture. And uh, when people, you know, when kids are sort of growing up, they always want to do the opposite of their parents. So <laughs> let's hope that's the case here because we need it quickly. No, absolutely, hundred percent, and I think that they are coming up conservative. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very excited to actually see where things go into the future uh, for Turning Point because we are actually going to be starting to uh, lurch into the universities and establish um, courses, not courses there, but actually events. That's the parliamentary bell, right on time, Senator Antic. I want to thank you so much for your that? time. How's um, the timing, Joel? <laughs> yeah, it's like Joel and the interview and the interview. I bet you, I bet you, your staff are there. They actually have a false one when they want to kill the it's interview. Like, we should do that. that, that <laughs> if, if I was smarter, I would have come up with that myself. But. No, no, you'll get fact checked and then they'll do rank yeah, your content. Yeah, <laughs> Alex, thank you so much. Please, if you're listening, guys, give it a share, get it out there, and um, please remember, if you want to support conversations like this, uh, we we keep them free and fair um, by by your donation. So thank you all so much, Senator Antic. Do you have anything to leave the audience with? No, look, thanks, Joel. Thanks for having me. Keep up the great work. And, uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, I think people have just got to keep the faith and keep speaking the truth. And uh, we'll keep doing the same in Parliament here and, and uh, hang in there. Awesome. I'll see you later. Thanks so much thanks, uh, for hanging around. Good on you. Cheers. Thanks for that.